Lord prophesied and gave a message. He says, the 2019 is going to be a year of supernatural. Amen? A year of supernatural. That means God is ready to what? To work his works. Amen? But are we in the position? Have we positioned ourselves? Have we prepared our heart? Are we ready to possess the land? Are we ready to possess our healing? We're ready to possess our breakthrough. Amen? We're going to Joshua 18. Everybody there? After Judges is Joshua. Is Judges? Is where's Judges? Joshua. For you. Before Judges, sorry. Joshua 18. <clears throat> Does anybody want to read the word? No? Okay. Here we are in a situation where all the people of, of, of God, the people of they are gathered together. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the meeting there and the land was subdued before them. And but, he said, but there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. Okay? So here we have a scenario. All the people of God, all the people of Israel are gathered together in one place. God told them with Joshua, let them, he's the one who's leading them to proceed and to possess the land of Canaan. Remember, God has given a promise. He's given them a blessing. He says, I'll bring you to the land of honey, milk and honey. Amen? So now, the promise is there. They have to possess it. And how are they going to possess it? The land, the blessing that we have, that God has promised us, before we reach to that blessing, we have to fight, fight off some enemies. There are some obstacles. There are some hindrance. The enemy is not going to easily allow you to possess the land. See? God has given us a promise. We have a blessing and a prophetic word that God has given us that he wants us to, to attain that inheritance. Amen? But, again, we have to, what? Battle and fight for it. Amen. So here we are. This is the case. They have, they have got the seven tribes of Israel yet have not received the inheritance. What the people of Israel did was they, they uh, uh, progressed uh, to a certain limit and then they, they kind of relaxed because certain tribes have already received their blessing. They have in, uh, attained the, their Possess the land that was inherited. Remember, there were twelve tribes, and each tribe Moses had uh, had already ordained. He had said, "This area is going to belong to this tribe. This section of the land of Canaan belongs to this tribe." He had already had assigned it. He had already assigned which property and who is going to get what before Moses passed on. So he's saying there are seven tribes yet have not received the inheritance. Then. Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? Amen? Joshua is asking the people of Israel, he said, There are seven tribes yet. Remember, there were 12 tribes. That means five and seven are what? Twelve. Amen? So those who have not received, and Joshua is saying to the children of Israel, how long are you going to neglect and possess the land which the Lord your God, your fathers have given you? See, the Lord has given us a prophetic word. God has given us a promise. He's given us a blessing that he has an inheritance. But he says, how long are you going to neglect it? How long are you just going to ignore it? You sit back and relax. Amen? You're going to sit back and relax and not possess it. 
God doesn't just want to give you a word, but he wants to see you to receive your blessing. He is more excited. He is more uh, longing and desiring for you to have what you need than even you do yourself. Sometimes God gives us a word and he says, okay, uh, whatever situation we ch challenges we're facing, God is more excited, more he wants you to have what you want more than you want it. So he's saying to you, he says, wake up. Why are you neglecting? Neglect? When do we neglect? When do we neglect things? When we become relaxed? When we become satisfied in our situation? We say, uh, maybe that's the way God wants it to be. Or maybe that's his will. But no! That's not his will. His will is for you to have what he has promised to give you. It's who's doing the neglecting? The people. Who's doing the negle neglecting? You and I. We ne neglect what God has promised us. We just sit back and relax and say, oh, God will do it. Oh, God will do it. No. God has already done it, what he has to do. He already assigned it. See, the word, when God proceeds the word out of his mouth, he said it. It's done. It's finished. It's done. And it's your job and I job to go to possess the land. Amen? It's, are we on the same page? Are we together? Okay. So now here's a situation where we become so sad. We be, ignore prayer. We forgot to read the word. We forgot to pray. We forgot to come to Sunday service, you know, or Bible study. We, we need to continue pressing on, pressing on. Pressing on to, to the high calling. Pressing on to what God has for us. Never give up. Don't allow discouragement. Don't allow the enemy to put uh, any kind of hindrance in us. Just even though the hindrances as we continue pursuing. Continue pressing on. Amen? That's what our theme song is. We're pressing on from faith to faith. We're pressing on from glory to glory. To the higher ground. God wants us to possess what he has given us. And we are not to neglect that. Don't just put it in the back burner and say, oh yeah, okay, God will do it in his own timing. No, the timing is now. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Are we there? Pastor William, do you read that? Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Amen? Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. What is the Lord saying here? The Lord is here to, at, at first at the beginning, if you know chapter 1, the Lord is speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is saying that, oh, I'm such a young boy, how can I uh, go out and be your prophet? He said, no, before I formed you, I knew you. So he has assigned, he has assigned us, he's called to be a prophet, and he's giving his, uh, his word uh, what he's supposed to do. He says, then the Lord said to me, you have seen. The Lord showed him a vision. He said, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Amen. Then the Lord said, you have seen well. You've seen well. I am ready to perform my word. Amen. The Lord is ready. He's waiting on us to perform his word. To perform his promise. Amen? But we are neglecting. We, 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 fail, we fail to, um, um, to prepare ourselves. To walk hand in hand. See, God wants to walk with us hand by hand. He doesn't do things his own. He wants us. He comes along with us on the side. He walks through the yay, though I walk through the valley of the shed. I will not fear. Why? 
because he is with me. Amen. He walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death. He walks us with us through that illness. He walks with us through that that uh, obstacle or hindrances, whatever situation you're facing, he's right there beside you. Why? Because he wants to show forth his glory. He wants to manifest his power. He wants you to know who he is. Amen? God wants to reveal himself to us. If you were not sick, how would you know that God is the healer? Amen? If you were not uh, lacking, how would you know that Jehovah Jireh is your provider? Amen? He allows us to go to that situation. He wants to manifest and show forth his glory to you, who he is. But instead, what happens? We neglect. We relax. We sit back. We don't pray. We say, oh, okay. Here we are. Amen? Let's move on to John chapter 9. God is a good God. He loves us so much. He wants more, more than ever what he wants to give us. Than we ourselves, we cannot, we just, we don't even, sometimes we don't even believe the word of God. I like Pastor Deborah, she said, do you believe God? Do you believe the word of God? Do we really believe it? When God says the promise to us, do we really believe it? Okay. Okay, I'm going to cover this. We're going to read from chapter 9, verse 1. Here's a situation where Jesus is healing, is going to heal. Uh, chapter 9, verse. Uh, okay, let's start from here. First, we're going to read, okay, there's two parts of it I'm going to read for you. <clears throat> now, Jesus passed by, and he saw a man who was blind, okay, from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we ask our, ourselves, why, we, why am I going through this situation, Lord? Why? He said, did my parents sin? Did I sin? Did I do anything wrong? He said, no. This situation that the, the, the man is born blind at the impossible situation. Say he had just lost his blindness. He had just became blind. But no, he was born blind. That's a situation which is impossible. How can a man who is born blind see? Amen? So sometimes we face challenges that are like, to us it seems like impossible. How can it ever be done? Amen? Then Jesus answered. He said, neither this man nor his parents said, but the words of God should be revealed in him. Amen? God wants to show forth himself, reveal himself in you and me and each one of us. We might ask ourselves, Lord, why am I going through this situation? Why? Why, 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 why? We ask God all these questions. But he says, your situation is to glorify him and bring praise to him. Amen? And then Jesus says, I must work the works of the Father who sent me while it is day and the night is coming when no one can work. Amen? So Jesus is saying that now is the time for him to reveal it while it's daytime, while it's still time. But the night is coming. There's going to be a time is coming when no longer, the grace period is no longer available. And we are coming to the end. This word is written 2,000 years ago. Today, we are 2,000 years and 19 since Jesus left. Amen? And we are close to the coming of God, uh, Jesus to return. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay. So, here we have a situation of a man who is born blind. So, what did Jesus tell him? 
And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. The, the, the meaning of the word Siloam is means sent. Amen? Remember that. So he went and washed and came back seen. Okay? We're going to analyze the word of God, the three situations that we have here. Now I want you to hold on to that and let's go to um, 2 Kings or 1 Kings 5. I'm not quite sure here. About Nahum. Nahum, who knows the story of Nahum? Lift up your hand. Does anybody know the story of Nahum? Is it first king or second king? Solomon, help me here. <laughs> okay. Five. Okay, we're going to read the story of Nam. Chapter five, verse nine. Are we together? Here we have a situation where Elisha, the man of God, verse 8, we're going to start reading from verse 8, heard that the king has Israel had torn his clothes, that he is sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me. So here's a situation where Nahum, verse, verse 6, it says here, Nahum leader, okay, this is how it started in the beginning. Nahum is the general, he's the governor, he's the leader in the army in the, in the country of Syria. He's a Syrian army of the king of Syria. Nahum, a commander of the army of the king of Syria, was the great and an honorable man. Verse 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Okay? What is his challenge? What is his situation here we have? Okay? Um was a great honorable man in, of his master because of him the Lord had given him victory over Syria because of this man okay he was also a mighty man of valor but a leper he was a mighty warrior a mighty man of God but he had a challenge he had a sickness and that was leprosy you, leprosy in those days was an incurable disease once you had leprosy you had to be detained. You have to be separated. Nobody could come near. It was contagious. So even at the time of Jesus, the people used to hide. The lepers would come out when Jesus would pass by and they would be healed. Amen. So let's get back to the Syrians had gone out on raids and brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Nahum's wife. So here's the situation. One of the Israelites' girls young girl she was taken captive into the city by Nahum and she was like a maid she was waiting on the wife of Nahum amen so here we have a situation and she said to her mistress the wife of Nahum and said if only my master were up were with the prophet who is in Samaria for he would heal him of his leprosy see here we have an evangelist a little girl She's evangelizing. She's telling the mistress, the wife of Nahum, telling her that we have a God in Israel who heals. Amen? Wow. And Nahum went in and told his master this, thus and thus, that the girl said, who is from the land of Israel, then the king of Syria gave him permission. He said, go now and I will send you with a letter. Go to the king of Israel. So what he does, he gets a letter from his king, the king of Syria, to take to the king of Israel. When he arrives to the king of Israel, the king of Israel is angry. He torn his clothes. He got mad. He goes, what am I, God? Am I a healer or something? <laughs> you know, because he went to the wrong place. He went to the king. He's assigned to go to the king. Remember, he's a commander. So that's the process. He has to go through the king. So the king is saying to him, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to 
kill and to make alive, that this man sends a man to heal, heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider, see how he seeks a quarrel. So he sees a situation like, aha, the king of Syria, he's trying to cause trouble here with me. <laughs> he sends his commander and expecting me to heal him. <laughs> so he, he takes it very serious and he, get, he gets angry, he tears his clothes. So it was, verse 8, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Syria, Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know what a prophet in is, that there is a prophet in Israel. So you see the scenario, you see the situation we have here? Here's a commander of another country who has overcome the people of Israel, taken them captive. Amen? And he's looking for what? Healing. He's looking for deliverance. He's looking for help. And who, who leads him to that help? A little girl who's a maid. Amen? Evangelizing. Testifying. She knows her God. She knows her God. He's a healer. That's the first thing. We need to know who our God is. Before we can tell other people who our Jesus is, we need to know Jesus is a healer, he's a deliverer, and he is what? Everything. Amen? So now here, here Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Amen? Elisha was the, 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 the man, he became very furious, verse 11, and went away and said, Indeed, I say to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abanai, Abanai and the Farah, the rivers of Damascus, better than the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. That's the situation. When the, the Elisha didn't want to come meet him, confront him face to face, because he didn't want to receive the glory of the healing. He doesn't want to receive that, oh, this prophet in Israel came and he healed me. No. He wanted to God to receive the glory. He wanted him to know his God is a healer. And he gave him a simple instruction. Amen? Gave him simple instruction. He says, go and wash in the Jordan. How many times? Seven times. Amen? And your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. So what happened here? Instead of uh, Nahum being f uh, simple instructions, sometimes God gives a simple instruction. He says, okay, this is your situation. Go and pray and fast. Go and seek my faith. Simple instructions. But we find, we find them so, um, like, my God, I thought Pastor Michael would lay a hand on me and she would pray for me. The intercessors would do this and do that. And I would be healed and I would be delivered. I would do, 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 do. We have our own concept of what we, how we expect God to operate. We try to play the role of God. We accept, it's, it's like this, we're telling God, okay, God, do it this way, do it my way. Amen? But God has his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So God gives a simple instruction. He never makes things complicated. He said, go and wash. How many times? Seven times. So what happened to Nahum? He became furious, became angry. Amen? This is, it's sometimes uh, we behave like that. We say, okay, that's all. You just want me to go pray and fast? Okay. You know, we think we have our own expectation. We have our own mind concept. Like this is the way God is going to work and do his thing. Amen? But not always the case. That's not always the case. But listen now, let's go to verse 13. And his servants came near to him and said, My father, if the prophet told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than what he says to you, wash and be clean? So look at this situation. It was not the faith 
of Nahum, Naaman to be healed. It was the faith of the servant. They had enough faith to say, if, if, if the prophet had told you to do, okay, go 10 miles this way, do climb this hill, do this or whatever, wouldn't you have done it? This is a simple equation. Go wash and clean and be clean. Amen? God is a good God. It was the, on the basis of the faith of the servant that he was healed, who encouraged him, said, no, we're not going to go back until, you know, you know, they had faith in him. And he listened. The good thing was he, he listened to the servant. Okay, well, let me see. I'll try it. Let me try it. I'll go dip in the... He said, aren't the rivers in, in his country where he came from of rivers of Damascus? Are they not better than these waters? He's probably saw the water is so dirty or nasty or whatever. And he said, isn't my waters in Damascus they're much more cleaner, they're much more better than this? Like, what kind of instructions is that? You know, we question God. When God gives us instruction, we doubt his word. We question him and say, that it like okay you know we complain we grumble amen but thank god he went down and dipped himself seven times in the jordan and saying to the man of god his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child and he was clean he was made clean amen praise god god is a good god now let's go to john 9 let's go back to what what jesus was saying I have, we, are, we are studying three situations. Here we have the people of, people of Israel who were promised the land of Canaan. Here we have Nahum had a promise for healing. And here in John chapter 9, we have three examples of how God manifests himself and his glory and his works. God wants to manifest his works in us. He wants to reveal himself in us. But what happens? In the situation of the people of the land of Canaan, what happened? They were, when they went into, into, into land to possess with Joshua, they were saying, oh my God, look at this. For example, not Joshua, at the first time with Moses. Remember they sent the ten spies? Remember? Everybody knows the story? This journey to the land of Canaan was supposed to be for 11 days. God was more anxious for them to enter into the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey, and possess it, than they were. They were, not, uh, they were not ready. They were not excited about it. When the ten spies went in to possess the land, how did they come back with what type of report did they bring back? A negative report. Amen? Yet these are the same people who saw God part the Red Sea. The cloud was with them in the daytime and the fire by night. Amen? But yet, what was going on with them? They didn't have the faith. They didn't believe. But yes, God is with us. We're going to go possess. They delayed their own their own um, blessing. They delayed it. And for how long? How long were they delayed? 40 years. 11 days journey was delayed for what? 40 years. Isn't that sad? That is so pathetic. Sometimes God has given us the promise. He said, go ahead, take it, it's yours. I've given it to you. Take it, possess it. But what causes the delay? We need to ask ourselves, if we've been going around the circle for 40 years about the same situation, we need to ask ourselves, Lord, what is it? Why am I not able to possess? You've already given it, it's mine. Because his word shall not return void. His promises are yea and amen. Amen? For the glory of God. He wants us to possess our possession. He's more excited to give it to you than what? Jesus says, my father, he's, he's, he's willing to give you the kingdom. He wants to give you the kingdom. 
Amen? God wants us to have what he wants to give us. But what happens? We delay our, our, our blessing. We delay when we don't what? Believe his promise. We doubt. We grumble. We complain. The people of Israel, they were grumbling and complaining to Moses. They made Moses' life so miserable. Moses, I feel so sorry for him. He, he alone and Aaron and Miriam, they were leading three million people. Can imagine all the city of Toronto, how many people are here? They were all, he was leading that many people. Can you imagine? They were ready to stone him to death. They heard, they literally heard the voice of God, thunder and fire coming down from heaven. Imagine. Yet, they doubted his word. When he came to the, to, they were right at the corner, they were ready to possess it, and Moses says, okay, go ten spies, go, on, go bring a report what the land is like. They came back, the two, the only two who had the faith was Caleb and Joshua. Two people who had faith, who believed on the word of God. Two people out of how many? Three million people. Just imagine. We delay our blessing. We hinder. We say, what is hindering us? It's our faith, our lack of believing, unbelief, spirit of doubt. We cl- complain and grumble to God. God, why, why this? Why this situation? Why am I going through this? Why am I doing this? But God is saying, I've given it to you. Go ahead, take it. It's yours. Amen? Let's go on John chapter uh, 9. Let's go back to this. Verse 7. And Jesus said to him, See, Jesus gave simple instructions. Go dip in the water. Go do this. Go do that. Go give a sacrifice. Whatever, after you were healed. Very simple instructions. God is not complicated. He knows we can all. Oh, we have a short memory or whatever. I'm just joking. We, don't, we forget. <laughs> Go, wash, and then what's the third one? Go, wash in the pool of Silo, which is translated less. So he went and washed and came back saying, That's verse, verse 6. When he said, had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and it anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Amen? What did he do? He spat on the ground and made clay. If we go back and we remember how God created Adam, he made him out of what? Clay. Amen? It's like God is recreating. God, our God is a creator. He recreates. He's an awesome God. Amen? Amen. With the saliva and there's a power in his saliva. There's power in him. Anything that comes forth from, they even touch the hem of Jesus. And the, the, the woman who was bleeding, she was healed. Amen? Amen? There's power in him. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. So here, just imagine this situation. Wake up. I want us to really analyze the situation. What did Jesus do? He what? He spat on the ground. He took the clay. According to medical science, medical, um, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as healing uh, the blind. The blind. If you go to a doctor and you tell him, um, Sir, will you put clay on my eyes so I can see? <laughs> what would the, what would the doctor say? You say he'll, he'll, ch- he'll chase you. <laughs> he'll say, "What? Are you crazy? The clay could be harmful for your eyes. You know that glass is made. The sand clay is like sand. It, glass is made out of sand. It could actually damage your 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 sensitive skin in your eyeball. Could blind you either. Just imagine." What God does is opposite to medical science. 
God who is the creator of heaven and earth. Is anything hard for him? No. Now here we have a situation. He's a blind man. He's blind. He has clay on himself. So what is he doing? The Lord told him, go and wash to the, to the, uh, the pool of Siloam. Okay. Does it say that there were people helping? How did he get to the pool? Explain to me. Come on, I want you guys interacting with us. I want you to really understand what we're, we're trying to, um, uh, the Lord is saying. Did the man have someone carry him and say, okay, Pastor William, come. Pastor William has clay on your eyes. Right? Now, I'm Jesus. I say, okay, clay, clay. Go to the pool and wash and be clean. Come back seeing. But he's, but he's blind. You're blind. How do you know how to go to the pool? How did you know where the pool is? No, it doesn't say that. It says, so he went and washed. He went. You know, if you ever watch blind people, I saw a blind man in the mall. And, I, I, and he, he was, I just stood back and watched him. I said, wow, he's blind, but yet he knows his way. How is he going? How, where he's going? What he's doing? They know. See, when you, uh, God has a sense, that he, you become sensitive to uh, your other five senses. Your five senses, if one fails you, the other four senses are stronger in you. It's hearing, feeling, they go by feeling, so they feel. They have a cane and they, uh, they tap on it and they walk. I see people are on the road, crossing the road, crossing the light. And I'm saying to myself, they're blind. How can they cross the light? Amen? So this man, he went. It doesn't say they took him to the poor. Does it say that? No. He went himself. Isn't that amazing? When you really read the word of God and bring it like practical and say, how did this man go to the pool? He went. So what, what was required for him to go to the pool? What made him to go to the pool? What made him to go to the pool? His faith. He believed the word of Jesus. Amen? And then what he did? He practically worked, uh, apply it. He walked. He went. He followed the instructions. Simple instructions. Go and to this pool. And, and the funny thing is, the, what's amazing thing is, is this pool is called scent. Why is it called scent? Who is called scent in the Bible? I'm going to ask you a question. Come on, Bible scholars. Where are you? Who's called the scent one? What? Speak out loud. The Holy Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Behold, I go and I will send you a helper. Amen. He went to the stand. So who was helping that man? The Holy Spirit was with him. Helping him lead him there. To wash. So what was required? He had to wash off the clay. The clay represented the dirt that was on him. He had to, to go through a washing, a period of washing, cleansing, purifying, sanctification. Amen? And who is going to help us with that sanctification and purification? Who is our helper? Holy Spirit is our helper. In the Bible, always the Holy Spirit he says the washing of the word. The washing out of my belly shall flow rivers of water. The Holy Spirit is always represented by oil, water, and fire. Amen? The Holy Spirit is cleansing us, washing us, purifying and sanctifying us. Amen? To do what? And came back seeing. There you go. He attained his blessing. Amen? So there was a procedure. There was a process. There was instructions given by the, uh, the word. Jesus gave out the word. Go. And wash. 
Wash the clay. Wash the dirt. Wash the filthiness in your life. Wash out all those bad habits or whatever is not pleasing in the eyes of God. Wash, cleanse, sanctification. Before what? He could see. Amen? So there's a process. God is sharing with us through his word that as much as he wants us to attain the blessing, there is a process. There is a, a, a procedure you must follow, instructions you must follow to receive and to attain your inheritance. Amen? How well we follow instructions how well we obey the word of the Lord is what is going to determine the outcome of your blessings. Either you delay it or you receive it. The man came back seen. What took the man to receive his sight? What He had to have faith. He had to be obedient to the word of the Lord. He had to Follow the instructions what Jesus gave him. And he went to the place of sin. Where the Holy Spirit was his helper. In washing away and cleansing him. Sanctifying him. Purifying him. And preparing him to receive his eyesight. Amen. 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 God is a good God. We always question God. Why this? Why now I'm not receiving my blessing? But we didn't obey his instruction. Amen. We're not obedient to his word. Amen. Amen? Look at the situation in Nahum. What he did. He got angry. Oh, I'm a, a man, I'm a commander. I'm, a, I'm in a place of authority. The kings instruct me. I, I have, you know, connections with kings. You and I, we might say to ourselves, what is this instruction Pastor Michael is giving? What is this instruction the Lord is giving? Go and, and, and do this or whatever. Don't uh, they know I'm a, I'm a man of this, I'm, a, I'm this and I'm that? Don't you know that? I'm a man of authority. Hey, don't you know that? I'm well educated. I'm a millionaire. I will drive a, the best cars in town. You understand? We might think of ourselves, that's the viewpoint that we have of ourselves. But in Revelation, he says to the church, he says, you, you think you are rich, but in my eyes, you are wretched, you are naked, and you are blind. In God's eyes. So what was wrong with Nahum? Somebody, come on. I want you to participate. What was the problem with Nahum? Nahum. Pride. Number one, pride. Number two, self-righteousness. He thinks he's right. Sometimes you and I, we are so selfish and we are so self-righteous. We think, I am right what I'm doing. I'm self-righteous. I'm, I'm right. I know the word of God. Nobody can teach me anything. I know the music. I can sing. I'm the best singer in town. I'm the best in this. I'm the best in that. Don't you know my degrees? Here's my education. You see how many degrees I have? I went to this school and I attained all this education. That's what we say. We boast in our self-righteousness. We boast and are prideful. And pride is a sin in the eyes of God. Self-righteousness is a sin. Doubting his word is a sin. Not believing his word is a sin. Not obeying his word is a sin. Not follow his instructions. And we ask ourselves, why I'm not receiving my blessing? And we are so self-righteous in the house of God, we think, oh, holy, 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 hallelujah, praise God. We lift our hands and praise him. Yet, those sins are prevalent. Those things are present in God's eyes. We're unbelievers, we're complainers, we're grumbling, we're doubting his word, we don't believe his word. We worry about tomorrow when Jesus says, do not worry, worrying is a sin. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that, I found that out a couple of weeks. I was reading this, so Jesus said, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, 
and what you're going to wear. These three things. Provision. God, when he's our provider, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. Why do we worry about these things? Worry is also a sin. We have to trust God. Say, give us this day our daily bread. He daily provides you. I was out of job for a while. I was never once a beggar and to beg to somebody and say, I'm hungry, please, Pastor William. Can you give me some food? Oh, my God. Never. The Bible says, the righteous shall never what? Beg bread. We should not be beggars because that is a shame for our Heavenly Father. Why should his children be sick, be beggars? We shouldn't be. So we are not glorifying God in our situation. We're not bringing forth his glory. He's not being manifested in us. Because of those hindrances, because of those obstacles, because of a doubt, because of not believing his word, not obeying, not being obedient. Amen? We want, he wants us to have our blessing. He wants us, we want to have it. But yet, when we're complaining, grumbling and complaining, we're so proudful, pride in, our, in ourselves. Oh, I'm this and I'm that. Oh, oh Lord, don't you know I'm serving you? Don't you know, look at how, what I'm doing for you? Don't you know? That's pride. <laughs> You know why? Because whatever we do for the Lord, it's by His grace. He's given us the grace to serve Him. He's given us the grace to worship Him, to praise Him, to sing songs, to play the drums, or, or whatever. You've given us the grace to clean the church. You've given us the grace to be a witness, to evangelize. I never knew that I, God had called me for evangelize. And I found out 2009 that God had called me to go to Jane and Finch. I used to live in Scarborough. And the Lord had me to transfer here in the West and just so I can uh, spend more time in evangelism and be here closer to the church. That was my calling. God called me for that. But I couldn't do it on my own because every time I asked the Lord, give me the grace to evangelize. Give me your utterance. Give me your word. So when I speak to those precious souls, that the words that come out of my mouth will touch their hearts. Amen? We can't do it on our own. It's by the grace of God. You and I, we are here. What is there to boast of? Paul says, what, what can I boast of? I have nothing to boast of except the cross. We cannot boast in anything except the cross. We boast in him. The wealth that we have, the house that we have, the car that we drive, everything, that the clothes we wear, it's because of his grace, because of his mercy. Amen? I have nothing to boast of what I am today. If God has given me the privilege and the grace to stand behind us, it's not by mine. I, it's not by my will. It's by His grace. He's given us the grace. Amen? Everything that we do, if even when you go to work, your job is a privilege, is a blessing to you. So when you go to your job, I, when you go to work, people complain about the boss, they complain about this job, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. They're grumbling and complaining. And sometimes you and I, we're Christians, we believe, and we go along with, yeah, you know, see, see our boss, look at him. Ah, I don't like him. Oh, look, he did that, and he said this, he did that, he said that. We're complaining on the job. That's the job the Lord has given to you. He's blessed you with. That's where you, you get your bread and your butter on the table. If you lose your job, you, you, you'll be unemployed. <laughs> Amen? So we complain. But we don't realize that, what we're doing. And then we ask God, um, God, where's my blessing? We become like the people of Israel who had the land of Canaan and say, Oh, I see the giant, but I'm like a little grasshopper. I'm nothing. <laughs> Amen? That the enemy looks bigger to us than our God. Which our God is bigger than our enemy. He even created the enemy. Who is Lucifer? He's a created being. He's a created angel by God. Amen? And he's been given power for a limited time. His time is short. He's coming to an end. And it's very soon. Very soon, my brothers and sisters. Amen? To God be the glory. I want us now um, to go into the... Uh, okay, as soon as we finish taking the tithe and offering, so remember we should pray first. Solomon, can we just hold on for five, five minutes? We're still in the Word. 
I want us, each one of us, first of all, to pray and repent. Ask God to forgive us. We have been grumbling and complaining against him like the people of Israel. Like Nahum, prideful. We think we know it all. We're righteous. We're self-righteous. Let's come before God and say, God, he said, he, I'm ready to perform my word. He's ready. He's waiting for you to receive your blessing. He's ready. But if we humility, if we humble ourselves, it takes the humility to humble ourselves before him. When we sing the song, I surrender all, are we truly surrendering? Are we truly surrender our pride? Do we surrender our grumbling? Do we surrender our complaining? Do we surrender our whatever issue we, uh, we uh, anger? We have an issue with anger. We're angry at God. We're angry at people. Okay? Yeah. Hey? Are we totally surrender? That's what total surrender is. We sing the song, but let's apply it to our lives and do it so we can attain our inheritance. So we're going to go into a five minute. Give us that song, uh, Solomon. 